sea storms are terrifying situation. Strong gusts cause tower water walls to smash into the ship. Even the largest most durable vessels can be damaged by a strong storm. And they are a necessary component of living on the water. The majority of contemporary cargo ships are built to withstand all but the worst weather and keep the schedule. But hurricanes are the biggest and among the deadliest storms on the ocean. And no crew wants to be caught in one. So how exactly do these massive vessels withstand the fury of nature? Welcome to another episode of High Technology. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Be part of this ever-growing platform of viewing some of the cutting-edge technologies around the planet by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any incredible videos in the future. Here are secrets on how US Navy ships don't sink during the storm. A warship's operational environment on the open ocean is very different from the stable and quiet surroundings of the safe harbor where it was built. For a battleship determined to complete its mission, high speed winds of over 40 knots coming from any direction, 30 feet high waves, and other powerful impact forces in open waters can be a major problem. Warships can navigate oceans because of three characteristics, design, materials, and maintenance. Naval engineers and designers adhere strictly to military and naval construction regulations to guarantee that all potential disasters are taken into account at the design stage. The primary determinants of a warship's stability in choppy waters are its static and dynamic stability as well as its fundamental geometrical design. Because it resists corrosion, can handle operational loads, and is less expensive than stainless steel or composites. Naval steel is still the material of choice for the ship's hull. Welding is the primary method used in shipbuilding because of its superior weldability performance. The superstructure of the USS Zumwalt class destroyer, for example, is made of composite material, while the hull is still made of welded steel in modern warship designs. The third essential component for permitting operations in bad weather is maintenance. Throughout their deployment, warships must operate continuously around the clock for several months. Preventive maintenance is a routine task that is meticulously scheduled each day to meet the needs. One such maintenance process carried out every five years is dry docking. A single vessel may cost as much as tens of millions of dollars for such a treatment. Midway surveys are to be carried out in addition to its regular schedule between dry docking times for various inspections, maintenance, and repairs for the ship's undersea structure. The essentials of preventative maintenance include cleaning, performing, visual inspections, verifying fluid levels, restocking, functional tests, and vibration monitoring. In the US Navy, commercial shipyards are typically hired to design warships. It can take 10 years to design the first ship in a class, and it might take several years to build a ship effectively. For instance, it takes a destroyer of the Arley Brick class roughly 4 years to complete its work in the shipyard before it is sent into service. Planning a warship's mission depends heavily on the weather forecast. The ship's crew receives and processes extended weather projections as well as short-term forecasts every day. Hurricanes are among the most hazardous weather events at sea. These are exceptionally powerful rotating storms that arise in warm waters and grow more powerful over the period of several days. The hurricanes are divided into five categories, with category 1, hurricanes having maximum wind gusts of 74 nautical miles per hour, and category 5, hurricanes having maximum wind gusts of 157 nautical miles per hour or higher. The Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico region of the Atlantic Ocean experiences hurricane activity from June to November. Up to seven different category hurricanes might occur on average per season. In order to improve weather forecasting software and gain a better understanding of how tropical storms and hurricanes evolve, the US military actively participates in the survey of meteorological parameters and the study of extreme weather conditions. The only operating military weather reconnaissance unit in the world is the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron of the US Air Force Reserve, also referred to as the Hurricane Hunters. Its headquarters are at Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi, and the fleet of 10 Lockheed Martin WC-130J Weatherbird aircraft are presently used for weather research there. A typical mission entails numerous flights at altitudes between 500 feet and 10,000 feet directly into the hurricane's eye. The GPS drum sound wind finding device is an extremely specialized and important piece of meteorological equipment that is operated by weatherbirds. The drop sound is a cylindrical instrument with various sensors and a high frequency radio. The drop sounds are launched from the 
the airplane 400 miles above the water and a small parachute stabilizes the direction of their descent. Dropsons communicate data to the Dropson system operator without the vertical atmospheric profile of temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and wind. Using a fleet of two Lockheed Martin WP-3D Orion aircraft and a Gulfstream G4 jet capable of high altitude flights exceeding 41,000 feet, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration also conducts research flights on storms. Hurricane landfall's destructive force can have catastrophic effects on the region and its residents. Hurricane Irma had a significant impact on Florida, Georgia, and Alabama in 2017. One of the fiercest storms ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin and the longest lasting storm worldwide in the satellite area, Irma had maximum sustained winds of 185 miles per hour in its Atlantic Ocean eyewall for more than 35 hours. The U.S. military forces respond to such disasters by deploying men, planes, and resources to carry out search and rescue operations transport casualties to safe regions, as well as flights to resupply with food and other necessities. The U.S. Coast Guard provides exceptional support to the flood-affected populace by deploying Sikorsky HH-60 helicopters, Rescue Hawks, and Jayhawk aircraft. Two turboshafts producing 1,735 shaft horsepower power helicopters. The HH-60 can be configured in a variety of ways to suit a variety of missions. With a crew of four, the HH-60 J variant can hoist up to six people out of the disaster area utilizing a variety of rescue tools such as slings, harnesses, winch stretchers, and rescue baskets. During widespread catastrophes like hurricanes, by flying Lockheed Martin C-130H Hercules aircraft in various configurations, the Air National Guard can also be called upon to assist the impacted areas. These aircraft can carry up to 42,000 pounds of supplies like food and medical equipment when configured for cargo. The C-130H can also be converted as a transport aircraft to evacuate up to 90 rescued persons from unsafe areas in emergencies involving large numbers of people. Having a well-kept ship, a knowledgeable and skilled crew, and a healthy dose of good fortune are necessary to prevail in a battle against the sea. And that's a wrap for now. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't spare us the like and hit the subscribe button together with the notification bell so you you won't miss any upcoming insightful videos. Once again, this has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. We'll catch you up real soon.